say. Okay. Uh, all right, we're recording. Um, big red button has been pushed. Nice. All right. Uh, welcome back, everybody. It's the Natives in, Air- in America podcast. <laughs> 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 uh, it's the Natives in America podcast. And uh, with me, this guy over here. What's up? What's up? Oh, uh, we're sitting in my old room. You know, face to face recording here. This is this is good. Yeah, Again, it's a it's humid as hell in here. Yeah, it's a little shaky, mm-hmm. a little shaky uh, startup, but yeah, definitely. Yeah, well, still got that time left. We can momentum can pick up any <laughs> <laughs> any second now. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Every something moment. exciting yeah. can happen just around the corner. So. Stay tuned. It's not like we're doing commercial. For yeah, the podcast. Right. Is that what is that what we're doing now? Uh, maybe, maybe. Mm. Do we do podcasts have commercials? Oh yeah, yeah, they do. Yeah, the All pros. Right. Uh-huh. They they read their copy. You mm. know, people people pay them to say a few words on their behalf. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And I like they love it. You know. Yeah. Hopefully they do. Hmm. <laughs> what, 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 what kind of product would uh, <laughs> what kind of product would uh, you advertise? Uh, that, like kind of that, that speaks to who you are. What what would you sell? Um, Ricks. Ricks <laughs> <laughs> <Rick> vapor rub. <laughs> <laughs> not bad man you heal people you know yeah you're out there and uh, widely known <laughs> widely used the name you know yeah yeah um and you probably use it yourself yeah you the burritos that you totally be <laughs> for the Bash's Deli yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there you go the Bash's Deli um say some copy for the Bash's Deli <laughs> uh, um Huh. Well, I immediately, immediately went to like, like products that you like, endorse. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, I exclusively only use this hand lotion or something, <laughs> or um, or certain shampoo. <laughs> I can only use this type of shampoo. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> I'm like I mean I like to experiment with the coffees but I think uh Ubon is my Okay. I stand by Ubon. Ubon? Yeah. I don't know what that is. It's a it's a brand coffee brand. Like Bulgers or Ubon. Oh, okay. It's U-Bon. kinda like a colorful can. Uh it's U-Bon. a dark brown. No, the the can so uh, look, the picture is kind of colorful, um, but it's like very bold brown. Mm. You never. Well, what coffee do you? If you, uh, I guess it's the coffee. Uh, you could en- endorse a coffee. Mm. What coffee are you selling? I was trying to be. I was trying to think of something funny, but I'm just. <laughs> I'm just <laughs> no, <laughs> funny right now. <laughs> um, I was like, well, what? What would I get behind that's kind of funny and perfect for just around here? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I want to get behind, like, like some... No, I guess you couldn't. I was thinking, like, come to Larry's bootlegs, you know, like, where the 40s are cold, you know? <laughs> <laughs> you know, the, the house on the left. <laughs> <laughs> Where you where your uh, old where you would keep your ODs cold for you? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> uh, it's like yeah, as long as it's cold, right? Local, yeah. I'll, I'm just thinking local, but that does bring up a story. Uh, I used to go to this one guy's house uh, further down the road, right here. We uh-huh. just we'd walk we'd walk up the highway, or we would walk to the desert, or we'd drive, you know, catch a ride, whatever. And the guy, like, we knew him for, like, ice-cold 40s. 
So like we would walk out there like like any any time of the year, just usually summer t- mm-hmm. you know, summertime. We're home and we're bored and we wanna get, you know, fucked up and uh we'd we'd walk through the desert and you know it'd be hot as hell but we knew once we got there we could, you know, get 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 some forties and then run out you know, run run back out in the bushes and crack one in a wash and just kill like a super old you know, a, su- a super cold brewski. Oh yeah, ah, yeah. Like it was ah, it's worth it. Yeah. Even though you're spending bootleg prices. Well you're willing to it's the it's the journey, really. It's the, yeah. It's the gas to get it where it got. I'd I'd probably like do read copy for like Shell or something, you know, like the gas. Mm. So, remember Benny's like what what is what is that now? We tried to stop over there. Uh there. it's Dalma's it? kitchens. Dal oh it is? Dalma's Dalma's over there. Well I don't know the whole story but it it was Benny Burgers for one point yeah. and for a long point of time. Long and time, yeah. And then it wasn't it was Dalma's kitchen. So it's still Dalma's kitchen. Yeah. Okay, but I, you know, I, 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 I kind of think it was always Thelma's kitchen. Yeah, long before Benny. Yeah, but I, I guess I don't know the whole. Should be a documentary on the, on the whole. Well, let's let's dive into that. Then. Cause yeah, 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 yeah. Cause I, I got some. Cause the Benny the Warrior Burger. Yeah, hell yeah. The Benny Burger, you know, just I yeah. don't know. A, that style, that taste, like, yeah. I don't know if I'll ever taste that again. But it was, when it went away, it was like, damn, that, that taste went away. Mm. Not the same thing about any, anything now, because it's just how strange when something goes away. I don't know. It's, Oh, yeah. I can still think of it, but I can't have it. So when we did the episode about the bygone era, uh-huh, that uh-huh. was w- that was one of those things that I didn't even think about at the time. Yeah, and we we pulled in there like we were hungry, but we didn't want to go to Bashes, you know. So we were like driving. Yeah, we were off, off, off. We were driving off the res, like. And we're like we're hungry, but do we want to wait until we get out to three points, or like can we stop real quick? Because we hadn't eaten all day then. But we're making this trip, and um, I was like, once once we decided it was time to go, I, th- I think I was working in the house, and I was like, I had to stop, put shit away, and then I'm like, all right, we're going, and we took off, and right outside, I said, like we we're still inside cells, but we made it to the top of the hill and turned around and we came back. I'm like, let's see, I think we, I think we called it Betty's. But the last I remember, it was being called Thomas. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, we went there, and like, I guess we got there right when they closed. And I tried to go up and order, and he says, hey, we're closed. Like, uh, it was already cleaned up. And so I was like, all right. But, like, I looked around in there, and, like, it just didn't feel familiar anymore. Like, I, I was over there all the time when, when we went to school. Oh, yeah, yeah, the yeah. road from there, so. Like, I, I remember playing football. And like having my lunches over there, and go over and eat. Yeah, that was cool. You could you, you get a, walk a little bit out, <laughs> just a tiny bit of <laughs> across, across, the road, road. Yeah, across the road, off the campus, get some lunch, and then come back. Yeah, yeah. And I get the warrior burger, but like I usually took the chili off, and there's still like enough like heat in the sandwich because it has already been sitting in there. Mm-hmm. I uh, eat it separately. Like, Cause I, I, f- I fucked myself up a couple times trying to eat it straight up. <laughs> but yeah, like, I remember that taste. Like, yeah. a good old Benny Burger, like, cooked up. Right out, you order it and they cook it up. Like, the fries, I remember, like, we'd go and just get fries and just chill. Mm. Out there on the, you know, the, the patio. Yeah, the yeah, yeah. Nah, Which wasn't too. always there. Yeah. Oh, wait, oh damn. Um... I remember we used to take a certain bus just so that it would drop us off right right by Benny's. Ah, nice. Go right there and then walk home. 
get some cheese fries. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, it wasn't... I don't... I mean, because I remember not always having a shitload of money, so it was, cheese fries was, I think, enough to be, like, a cool little snack, but it wasn't yeah. like I was buying burgers every time I went there. <laughs> but I think it was a hangout spot, too, because... Yeah. Meet up. You know, no one wants to go home. Yeah, everybody's just chilling. <laughs> trying, to, trying to push it. Like yeah. School, school is out. You're sitting down like, mm. somebody might show up. Yeah. Who, who knows yeah. who might just show up? Man. What's her name? You know? <laughs> uh, so, what about the, the, um, Does Coyote, Coyote Store ever... Do you ever go to the Coyote Store? Used to. Yeah. It seems like it changed hands a few times. I don't know. But... It feels like it was more popping when I was younger. <laughs> or, I mean, maybe it's not... Maybe I don't go there enough. But... I remember that was the spot to go to when we were younger. Coyote Star. I feel like, I, I know it's been there forever, but I feel like it's a new thing. Really? Yeah. Like it was new to when we when we became like adults. Huh. Or let's say in our 20s. <laughs> we're getting old, dude. <laughs> we're, we're like, I don't know, man. The other day, well, it's, They've said it a few times, but I don't know if they're joking or if they're, <laughs> if they're really fucking serious with it. Um, like, we'll be driving to Tucson, and, you know, someone will say something about just, you know, the distance. And then, uh -huh. then they'll ask me, like, were you around when, <laughs> when, they, were, when they were taking wagons? <laughs> 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 Like, I know the, the concept of time is a <laughs> fickle thing. And maybe my age might... Hmm. The way you think age works, yeah, maybe that's a legit question. But, uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> but, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I think it's a joke, but like, if they're really serious, it's... <laughs> So just an even worse joke. <laughs> oh God. So, um, I mean, no, no offense to anybody that took wagons to Tucson, but like, yeah, like that was a long time ago. Yeah. But there's still been a long time to where, like, even the cars, like the brands, like I don't even think they make the same cars. We were driving back. I mean, we weren't driving them, but mm -hmm. the cars that were their models no longer made, probably. Or um, so there was a my concept of a wagon. Mm -hmm. Is it, is it uh, pertains to me and my time here? Uh, is is down the road right here, in my cousin's house. Um, they, I don't think it's even there anymore. It might the shocks might have still been there or something? But like when I was a kid, they had the. It was already like remnants of a wagon. Mm -hmm. It was like base. The platform was still there, but like it was rotten, and like the wheels had broken up. But like there was like maybe one or two still attached to it. It had like metal for like like. I don't know what you call them, scissor springs, like it, these giant like strips of metal that worked as like a. I think it was, I want to say it was iron, like like leaf springs mm, on mm. A, on a truck, mm. but it was on a wagon, and like it was already broken down, like it was already like you know three feet tall where it used to be, you know maybe five feet tall, and it was like all worn down. So that wagon was from that time. Where they would ride a wagon to to and fro, you know, to yeah. to Tucson and or not even Tucson, but like the 
I want to say the the northern camps, like the uh, yeah, yeah, the other communities for the well other other communities, and also like when you would travel with the with the weather. Mm-hmm. And, um, maybe it's not that old because of the metal that was on it, but yeah. Um, anyway, that that's my relationship to that kind of time is. I remember playing on it as a kid, and it was already worn down and. Dang. You know, beat down and like rotten. Yeah, but that was from that time. Wow. I mean, even the <laughs> like, what was the, the transition to wagons to vehicles? Like, a lot of dirt roads. Was it like some people were driving cars, some people were driving wagons? Yeah. Or I, I mean, as much as we've the shit we're going through we in our timeline like we missed a lot of cool shit too I mean I think it'll be fun to take a wagon to Tucson uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah well you mean, I mean you maybe mean like the, maybe the like first time <laughs> like a couple day trip you mean like you go and camp um, and I mean stop and camp if it took I mean I if it took like two days to go to Tucson, like to make a trip, opposed to just say say you leave in the morning, leave on the fr- Friday or maybe morning, in, or maybe in the evening, mm-hmm. and you stay a night, definitely one night. You ride all day, or you know when it's not hot, you know you go as far as you can and may possibly camp a second time. Mm-hmm. And then you're there in the morning. Would you still be into that? Like, like maybe as a once in a lifetime type deal? No, uh, I mean across like over country. I think adjusting to that time, that that amount of time you have versus feels like like we're so. I'm gonna do this on Monday. I'm gonna do this on Tuesday. Versus this is gonna take me all week. Mm-hmm. to get it done so like if I'm thinking like that that does sound more maybe of a challenge versus not being challenged in, in those aspects where yeah. you're actually getting out and I mean besides maintaining the wagon other stuff you're doing I mean or not doing if you have other people you're going with and mm-hmm. I just had this crazy thought. Yeah. What if someone, maybe not us, but I'm thinking us. All right, so let's say let's yeah, say yeah, it. Let's let's my brother. Let's, let's spit it out. Let's spit it out. Uh, what if uh, we organized like an old school, maybe somewhat competitive, like group camping trip slash wagon trail run mm. from like a far east or west village to like outside of Tucson or Santa Rosa or something like like a wagon trail cross country mm, mm. and we just tracked them like you know maybe somebody's got a GPS on them dude I think that would and be like, awesome. like maybe co- maybe a family or like a group of friends would build so I'm going deep like they wouldn't just buy they would build their own wagon Uh and try to make it to town yeah so like was that 180 miles on a wagon that they built with maybe a horse like if somebody would donate them a horse I don't know know, like maybe something crazy to pull it like I don't know yeah well I mean like a wagon Wagons didn't fall off the earth, you know. People still. Yeah, but I'm saying now. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I'm saying, like, I think it's doable to where someone can make one or a group. Almost kind of, <laughs> it's like, a, like not around the world, but it, to that same. Degree. Not even, not even that, but like as a. As a tribute to history. Yeah, yeah, no. Like tri- tribute to our our heritage. Like yeah, yeah, no. I 
I mean, I, I think they did like a strongman competition at the museum. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it was like wood chopping and hauling and I don't know what else. Yeah. I just remember the wood chopping and I was thinking, I bet I could compete. But uh, there was other stuff. Mm -hmm. I think it was like maybe moving a, a bale of hay or something like it was. I don't remember. Flipping the tire? I don't remember. Maybe. Huh. But it was more like traditional stuff. Like, like I guess when they first thought about it, they were going to do just like the straw man competition, like the tire, mo move a log, like some, something heavy, like mm -hmm. what they do, pull in a car. Yeah. But um, in the end, they're like, hey, let's make it like traditional, like skills, like wood chopping and all that. That's pretty cool. Fire, I think it was like fire starting, wood chopping, and... Uh, some, I, don't, I don't know. What, I don't even. I, I didn't even compete. Uh -huh. But it was about our time, and I feel like I feel like maybe Nash competed, or they were talking about it. I can't remember. I'm trying to think. I remember the strong woman. No, I never heard of that. Yeah, I mean it was the same concept. <laughs> like what? Though what they do? I remember they're doing the tire. Oh, really? I'm flipping the tire, and uh, they have this huge iron. It wasn't like a anchor, but it was like a it was a big metal scrap piece that they yeah. were pulling. Uh -huh. But it was hooked to a chain. They were pulling uh -huh. that. Yeah. It might have been weights that they yeah. were pulling. I mean, um, it just um, looked like a, like a lot of metal. Like yeah. on, on like a little sled. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, Interesting. What but else would it be like but a run? But not to and that's a good idea, but I think just doing the whole experience of taking the wagon from the res to Tucson. Okay. Well let, let's talk logistics here. What if would we go like village to village? I along the t along the path, uh, I think. Well, do you, do you think I think getting some finding the old trails. Oh yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> but we'd, we'd have to. Yeah. Oh. If they're there, like I'm pretty sure they're there. Like if you if you go up on uh, on Kit Peak, uh -huh. and you look out, you can see these long, clear lines like they go like way like just in all these directions. Mm. And uh, I wonder if, like, the communities along the way would, like, donate water and maybe cook them a meal hmm. or something. Like, where, where we organize, like, do something together where, like, cells organizes with Bible Kibri and... Mm. Out there and out there. Yeah, yeah. Well, on a cross-country wagon trip. Yeah, yeah. Or, or maybe, okay, or maybe okay. we'll get, like, somebody who makes... Mm -hmm horse trailers and they make a wagon for them to uh -huh. compete with so like two or three or four yeah and they're donated to groups or a family and they're like oh we're gonna pull this thing oh I was thinking how crazy would it be if they took turns pulling it but that's that's like strong man shit uh, yeah, <laughs> no, yeah, I, I was thinking like dad I don't know how you would do it without a horse yeah, you would need a horse. Yeah, so like... I think you would have to train a horse yeah. to pull something like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think that's where, where we're getting into the <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm thinking about it. I'm like, what, what else would we use? Like, um, it just wouldn't be the same, would it? I think maybe this is far-fetched now. Yeah, yeah, I mean... Can a wagon go without a horse? Well, I was, I was thinking like somebody on a quad would pull something like just, oh. or something. Oh, I just thought of that. Like, but I was thinking before that, like, I don't know if they pull it with a car and they follow those types of roads. Like, I, I don't know. I was, I was thinking cross country, but like, who would donate their horse for something like that? Mm. The, I think, I think. It would take a, a lot of work, and we'd all have to. I, I think it sounds insane now. Like, uh, like it's not. No, that's, what I'm, that's what I'm trying to say. Like, 
Like I think of like um, the Clydesdale, like the, those the Budweiser horses <laughs> that are pulling them, and like those horses are trained to pull, but they got to pull. So I'll, I mean. Are you saying we should seek out Budweiser for sponsorship? <laughs> yeah. for sponsorship uh, this, uh, maybe getting some, just know maybe getting some tips, tips on uh, how a wagon works. Because like, when you were talking about this wagon that was in your community, like, it must have been a newer model of the wagon. I'm thinking because Because it, it did have springs. Yeah, yeah. But they were simple as fuck, like... So the the wheels the wheels were wooden yeah but I almost want to say they had like metal rings and nuts like to take it on and off like yeah um I saw a video the other day with Michelin they're like Michelin was losing money on their tires because no one was going places so their tires weren't getting old so what they started to do was they started to like say that these places that were like in the outskirts had like the best pie or the best this so that people wanted to travel somewhere and come back and, and actually experience whatever it was being sold but that was their way of getting people to you know where are their tires? Yeah, now? so they would need new ones. Huh. But like, you're saying they would set up shop next to an attraction? No, I'm saying that like, they, I think they created like a like a almost like a like not even in the same arena. Say like, oh, there's just this hype about a restaurant mm -hmm. has the best lobster, whatever. You guys gotta check it out. And what would they do? Like maybe coupons or something like with their purchase of a Michelin tire like no nah, I think people go out to where I don't know I think I lost my train of thought but you said they were they were talking about attractions for Michelin to get people to go traveling yeah but it was really just the way to get people to wear their tires yeah. And to to get new ones, obviously, but like, mm -hmm. I mean, the I guess the evolution of, I mean, I guess it'll be pretty cool to know the evolution of wagons and and like in our land, like mm -hmm. where we building our own or where we well, buying pieces from is even like 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 the tills that people used to till the soil like people use that as almost to like make timber so like yeah. there's all this scrap metal stuff that yeah is here and there and you use it for something else but like I guess the so what kind of model wagons were we interesting. using or were we just inheriting them for whatever or we trading them or I bet there was trade and then building or was it like <laughs> only, only families I'm trying to I'm trying to see it in my head right now because I think it wore down to the point that they got rid of it uh -huh. or like maybe just the shocks are there now and the wood's all gone but like um because when uh, I think of a wagon, I don't think the shocks or springs or... Well, I just think of wood. It didn't, it didn't have shocks. It was just these long pieces of metal that were curved. Mm. Hmm. I, I mean, it looked like the bare minimum. There was metal, though. So it was like a, maybe a kit. Hmm. What, why would they use wagons anyway? Like, at what point does wagons become the deal? Like, like how how far back were TOs specifically or natives 
using wagons because I, I don't think a wagon's even like oh that's traditional like oh 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 that's mm -hmm. traditional right now. yeah I mean they're old yeah so it's like a time piece like, like it sets it in a p certain point in time but like when would that have started there was like like mimicking going on. Like well, there oh, was pe people are getting around. Well, that's small. I mean, there's around us a lot of small towns. A lot of yeah, um, they, they were starting. So we would see wagons. So we want wagons. I'm th maybe cowboys. Like there's I mean, a lot of cowboys and, and, and cattle going on. Yeah, people. but e even that's like a modern thing. Cattle, like running cattle, like having. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess it's not that modern. If you go, like, they were rustling cattle back in the day. Like, Yeah, but, I mean... Like, how... I guess we... When did that cross over for T.O.? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Our... our the timeline of... Because, I mean, even horses are not... Yeah. Are not originally indigenous to the continent. Yeah. They were brought in over... Like, yeah. Long time ago, but... Yeah. They've become a part of... The history and yeah. it was a I mean people still use horses yeah. maybe not as a form of long commuting but yeah. um, like you said cattle is still it's, it's been a thing so I don't want to say it. when did it become a thing on the nation yeah, I mean, even our districts, there, those are the borderline for the fences of the cattle. Yeah, but that was like, all right. So I heard stories of that where it was like all the ranchers together were mixing cattle. There was all these disputes, and finally they're like, all right, well, it, it was like a game and fish, but it was the the ranching group, mm. and they were like, all right, we're gonna divide the districts according to this, this, and that, like. They got together, and it wasn't so long ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All, yeah. all this barbed wire fencing. Hold on. All this barbed wire fencing, like it's not, it's nothing new. Yeah. So I started think, looking back, like, all right, <clears throat> all right. Well, well, I gotta get this off my head first. Um, we'll come back to this whole wagon trail idea but I do think there should be some kind of for fun competitive get communities back together using old skills mm, mm. or natural skills like fire starting and yeah maybe cooking outside camping like whatever like just building your own shelter kind of deal like just <laughs> even if you call it survival like survival yeah. skills like yeah yeah I would like to see that like um, a bobble or something. Yeah, no, I, I'm actually got me thinking of this story of um, going to bobble, uh. but it was it was so crazy because um, a lot of my my uncles, my mom's brothers, like they one and probably passed away when I was one, and then the other one was I was like a youngster but um maybe I didn't spend as much time with them as like you know I I think I was still a teenager when, when they were both gone so like I didn't really know them as a like an adult or even a young a young adult so mm. <clears throat> so we're at Bobble a few not a few years ago damn it's probably like 10 years ago and uh but they're but my uncle's friends you know are, are relatives their cousins you know they're still around so they have stories of them mm -hmm. and yeah. it was crazy because we were taking this, the trail to Bobo that you know is, I think a lot of people take mm -hmm. and um my uncle Tony or um Cousin Tony, Uncle Tony, he was like, like reminiscing of times when he went up with with my uncles, which were his like his cousins, 
And he was like, yeah, it's that one time where Sean, me and Jinjin, and me and Kenny, you know, where, you know, he was like telling all these stories of this trail that we were on, the same trails. Yeah. So it was, it was kind of symbolic to where I felt I was with them traveling. Even though it was not the same time period, but it was the same space. So, you know, that was very powerful to mm -hmm. to have my Uncle Tony there to point that out. But just that feeling of, like, we've gone through this time. Or we've gone mm -hmm. through this space before. Yeah. We've traveled through here before. Yeah. So just talking about getting on the wagon and traveling to Tucson and just so we're still traveling to Tucson yeah so I'm just like what what will we learn from from going to town that way you know we've mm -hmm. always we didn't like I said we didn't live through that time period to where we were always taking cars you know mm -hmm. what did you get out of that trip mm. wow so just kind of hearing you talk about that and then Knowing that our our relatives, that yeah. was how they did it. Yeah. That was what they did, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah, it might might be some powerful stuff we tap into. Well, I think I think you just tapped into it. Um, makes me want to. I've been wanting to interview my dad. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I keep trying to talk, you know, start working him into the idea. But like he he remembers times like that. Like um, um, I didn't I didn't I didn't know it at the time, but when I was I was younger, I was definitely wasn't a straight up kid. But like I was younger, um, we went to this graveyard in Buenos Aires, and it was up on the mountain top. Like the very end of the mountains, the, the Bible Mountains here, and uh, went to the graveyard. And afterwards, he's like, "Hey, I want to go over here." I'm like, "Oh, okay, lead the way." You know, he took us around, and he brought us to like the foundation of his childhood home, mm. and it was like mud. And he remembered growing up with his brothers, with his grandparents, like his grandma and his grandpa, and. Um, if, if I, I was just looking at it I want to say it was like there was like two rooms just attached to each other's two rooms side by side and um, mud walls and they had already worn down with the rain all the way to the ground and they were like four inch high now and there was mud everywhere and um, I want to say it was like maybe 10 or 12 feet wide by maybe 15 or 16 feet long mm. like just a mud house in the middle of the desert and he remembers like waking up and going and getting the horses and the cattle and going and getting water and like bringing water back to the house mm. and that that's a time where I think wagons were around maybe mm. so we're not far from it and I think that's what I was seeing when I was like, oh, there's a there's a wagon here, but I never experienced it. So it's like we're not, we're just after that type of generation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then the kids that follow us will be that much more removed from it. Well, I was just, not to throw us off topic, but the, I don't know, what do you know about this, um... This uh, space expedition for just non astronauts, just civilians. Okay. Did you hear about that? Or you know, uh, I've, been, I've, I've been. I haven't been paying attention to it, but I just know. I've been following headlines of, like. I got, like. So a that form of traveling to that type of expedition. By comparison, or just uh, what I, mean, I, I think like about it, the new generation, and that's what that's what's out there versus that was what was out there for 
that time period. Um, Sorry. Yeah, ruin it. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 I'm about to go on off on this, but uh, we're 40 minutes in. I don't think we've had a single actual topic. <laughs> <laughs> we just been, we just been going. Yeah. Um, we um, got the end. Yeah, <laughs> and now now we got the new topic of space travel, which I want to talk about. Um, I've been following headlines and reading occasional articles. And a lot of them are from like Elon Musk's, like, uh, like a newsletter. Mm -hmm. So I've been reading the free version of it, and they send like, you know, Tesla news and SpaceX, and uh, not very many of his other programs, but that that's what they and and Elon Musk news, like what's going on with him, and like. Oh, I, w- I want to talk about what Michio Kaku Keku uh-huh. Michio Kiku Kaka Keku <laughs> I'm a big fan of his uh-huh. and um, he was talking about space travel and how it's better for the government to pave the way when it, whenever it comes time for invention because uh, R&D uh, research and development is very expensive so He's saying it's better for space travel to be handled by a government and governments because they have the money and like ability to test and they're at the level where people can get killed and they just keep going. Like so, they they research and develop and they they create all these things. They create you know NASA was like a I want to say government funded, but that doesn't sound right. Like it, it's it was our space, mm, mm, mm. supported by the government and like the people. The people mm. wanted it and supported it, and they ran through all these tests, and people you know died. And the people got in trouble. Like people succeeded, and they tried and tried and tried and spent all this money, and because of them, now we say as us as a people oh, we've been to space we've been to the moon we've been on the moon we're, we're at Mars now we're going back to Mars we're going back to the moon but now there's privatized space travel mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and what Michio Kaku was saying what to, um, was that uh, to flip the bill for that kind of stuff it takes a ton of freaking money to yeah, privatize it to have one group or one person paying the bill, flipping the bill for all this. And there's there's government grants, but then government can only take you so far, and especially if you're trying to own it, like private, private yeah, space yeah. travel. So to think about wagon traveling and then space travel, and now it's becoming privatized and private citizens actual citizens or non whoever's got the money to buy a ticket mm-hmm. can go to space now yeah and there there was one the other day wasn't it the the dude he had like a plane and it flew up with his rocket in, into the air it reached a certain altitude and speed and then it released his rocket and he's in there there's like five or six astronauts mm I don't think they're even astronauts. It was like a rich guy, a billionaire, and like a couple other people that could flip the bill and they wanted to be in space. I think some of them were his people and the plane flew him up, hit a certain altitude and then released it and then the rocket, it had a rocket and it took over and went and took off and I guess it was at the special angle to escape Earth's gravity. Uh They went into space for a little bit and then I think they came back down and landed but it was like holy shit there it is yeah I think I think that line has already been crossed before but that was a it was a marker of change like and we were here for it it, it, it happened yeah and what's funny about the news now like we don't even want to watch it it's always so horrible and what they focus on but every now and then something cool 
hits the headlines, maybe one headline on one science page, you know, science journal. Yeah. And for that moment, maybe there's a buzz, but, like, people in general aren't aware of it. I mean, I didn't... I remember the possi- when they were talking about the possibilities of... I was thinking of the Kings of Comedy where is it such a thing you can they're saying like you know like white people like wanna <laughs> they <laughs> we're gonna they wanna leave to they wanna go, yeah they wanna leave us behind it's like we're coming to but yeah. uh I mean it, it reminds me of the of the Sound of Thunder the time travel like like if you have the money you can go you can see it yeah but um, I know what what, what, are, what are you what are you what are you sacrificing or what are you getting out of it? Uh, but I actually did hear a little clip of the guy talking about like seeing Earth that uh, from that angle and that perspective, and he was like, I mean, I couldn't tell if it was like. Are you happy? I mean, are, are you I'm. I mean, I'm. I'm trying to figure out how how it was said because it's like, yeah, these guys that are getting to go to the on this expedition, there or was it really just sounds like you get shot into space and then you come down. You know, it's not like you're. Walking on the moon, doing the moonwalk, you know, you're, you're, you're just you're getting to see it from a high altitude, and then it's the thing is like lasted like six or twelve minutes, and then you're back back down to earth. Well, I don't know. I, I guess I could be getting it wrong, but it was just sort of like this guy was saying, like he saw the earth, and there was no borders. There was it was just like one one whole thing and he was just like he sounded very positive and very like like I don't know I don't know the words just like he was a changed man cause he got to see mm-hmm. what he saw but yeah. I don't know it was like was that what money buys <sighs> um I, I, this this feeling of I mean yeah I don't know I just it just is this something where you know back to talking about value is is this going to be something we're going to be valuing where hey we have a lot of money let's go to the moon you know <laughs> let's go look at earth from 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 this point yeah um, let's get a new view but it does speak to our I don't want to say our obsession but our our curiosity to want to explore you know do you would alright if you could would whoops if you could would you go to space would you go to space if you could <laughs> would like, you take off in a rocket um, would you strap on to one of those things I want to say yes but then I don't know I'm like thinking like are they gonna need me in space? Like, <laughs> it's like I'm getting, uh, I'm getting stuff to where it's like you know I'm on the special task to save the world, and they need me in space. Like, you're on the list, brother. Like, like, that sounds exciting. Get, but, like, get Sky Anton on this ship, on this plane. Get him on the rocket. <laughs> we need him. We need him. He's on the list. Uh, I come here all the time, baby. Uh, I don't know. I, it sounds fun, but then, so, so, so I'm, I'm thinking, when will it trickle down to us? Do you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I think well, that's the fun. I mean, the cool part about it is that's why I mentioned this. Like, maybe not our generation, but mm. ones down the road. I mean, they might be. Yeah. They might have some cheese going into space. <laughs> Chiefs in space. <laughs> um, 
Who will be the first native in space? Oh, uh, it'll be Graham Greene <laughs> or uh, West Studi. Oh man, shit! Uh, it'll, be a, it'll be an actor, Adam Beach. Think so? Yeah. I don't know. Well, so or maybe it'll be a million. Two thousand, or was it? Oh, you saw the price? Yeah, I think it was two thousand five hundred. No. Oh, a what? Quarter million. Two. A ticket. Two hundred and fifty thousand. Two hundred and fifty thousand. I think so. Quarter million. Quarter million. Okay. A ticket. A ticket. A yeah. quarter of a million dollars. When when will it be fifty bucks? No, you you think we'll ever? What 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 I always come back to and start tripping on? I don't I don't know if it's my headphones. What what I always trip on is um. Everything's so far away. Like light years. Whenever they talk about how far away. Um something is they use light years because it's so fucking far away and, and my understanding of light years is it's the amount it's the distance light can travel in a year mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it's fine Fuck, it's going fast it's so fast it's faster than anything we know on earth uh -huh. because we we can't beat that we can't I, I, I don't think we can even go the speed of light right uh -huh. now yeah Nah, so it's like I thought it was impossible yeah well that's what I'm saying yeah. and they say that's what the time travel will be because time will start to bend once you reach that speed yeah that's what they're saying anyway so that's a, that's a hell of a long time it's like 600,000 something it, it, it's a super high number there's an actual constant it's actually the C in E equals MC squared uh -huh. It's the C square that's the speed of light. The circumference? No, no, no. Mm. It, it's it's speed. It's speed times mass is equal to energy. So okay. it's like anyway, anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, so yeah. fucking far away. Like we, we're always talking about these planets we're gonna go to that can sustain life. Like they're habitable, like Earth. We got resources. And they're light years away. So, we, if, if you and I got into a ship and tried to go to one of these stars, we'd be dead long, long, long before we ever get there. Even if something could support our life. Mm -hmm. Because our lives are only last, you know, <laughs> maybe 70 years. Yeah, you know, yeah. like, like our, we're, our, our average lifespan. So, how many miles, you know, how far can you get on 76? And that's if you start as a baby. From baby, from birth to wherever you're going. Yeah. And then it's usually like 100, 200 million light years away to the nearest star, or whatever. Like they throw that number out all the time. And it's like, we, we, we would have to figure out either time travel, wormhole, or maybe even freeze ourselves to be able to travel that far. Mm. And by the time they get there, everybody here on Earth will be dead. That they know, anyway. Yeah. Everybody they know, they'll be gone, long gone. And things will have changed. And like, so right now, time travel, like, how, lo how much longer are we going to invest in that? At the hopes of, like, we're going to Mars, we've mm. done it, it's doable, it's possible. I'm thinking the first groups of people that go there are going to get fucking killed <laughs> and murdered and it's going to be horrible. Yeah. And we won't find out about it until that signal comes back. You know, like we're not going to be aware of it while it's happening. Yeah. Or maybe we will. Like maybe we've caught up to the time, you know, whatever. So what I'm, <laughs> what I, I, I think I went real deep and dark, but what I'm saying is when you're talking about our, our kids kids go into space some uh -huh. chiefs way after us I hope 
that space travel is still uh, drive, like we're still going for it. Like mm. right now, right now it's hot. Like we just experienced a milestone, you know, several milestones. They're, yeah. they're happening every day, and space travel, like. I think I'm just <laughs> I'm just well, going on now. Like I mean, I think because to me it's like I always thought space travel was landing on the planet, getting out, walking around, you know, seeing whoever else is there. But yeah. that's really not how it goes. And sometimes space travel is just driving around the planet, and taking some pictures, and mm-hmm. then coming back not that exciting but maybe it is so so that's what I'm saying like I, I think one of the greatest accomplishments accomplishments we've ever pulled out mm-hmm. was sending out the orbiters mm. I'm drawing a blank right now other names there's two of them Hubble well, Hubble's, Hubble's one of them, but I think we've brought it back into our orbit now. Mm. Um, oh God. Voyager. Mm. Oh, Voyager yeah, 1 and 2. So they sent them out. And if you think about it, like whenever we talk about searching the sky for a meteor, there's a hell of a lot of sky out there. You, you've got a point in all directions that we have only so many telescopes doing it. And one of our greatest space travel accomplishments was launching out these satellites, two of them, and we passed our planets and we got these fantastic pictures. And that's where all all of everybody's pictures ever of the planets came from. It was this great plan that these people set in motion and pulled off. They accomplished it. Mm. But it's going to keep going. We can never get it back. And at some point it's going to stop working. It's going to... Re- it's going to go farther than we can track it mm. we'll lose communications with it in fact I think we have already I've been I've been hearing mm. that there's reports I think saying you know it's already left our light the light from our galaxy it's already left that edge oh, shit. where we light up space and um, so what I'm saying is that our, one of our greatest accomplishments was sending off two vehicles in these directions and all we really accomplished is we, we took pictures of the galaxy from these one super duper angles that they pulled up mm-hmm. but then you think about direction in space and we're yeah there's so much more space out there like I, I'm, I always feel like a little tiny thing when I think about it like uh, how how far are we going to go how far can we pull this out yeah I think we're, I think we're going to Mars, but what I think usually tends to happen when in all the movies is if you're on another planet, it's fair game. Like it, it's the Wild West. You know what I mean? Like oh oh we're we're not we're not being held we're to not. Earth standards. Uh, because those courts are back there on Earth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, this is Mars justice. Yeah. You know, like, this is Mars justice. We're not in Kansas, no. Yeah, way. yeah. So, even if at some point we pull off going to Mars, mm-hmm. it's going to become us and them. Well, yeah. it's, we're so far apart that the people up there are going to have to figure out their own shit and start it off. And I hope, hopefully, they survive. I'm thinking they they keep doing like solar powered lunar modules kind of stuff. Uh, and I'm thinking, yeah, keep the solar, but um, go underground because yeah. it's so fucking cold at certain times of the year. I wonder if there's gonna be like a push. end of the day, huh? I wonder if there's gonna be like a push somewhere in time where it's gonna be like tired of. Are you tired of the Earth, you know, come to Mars? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, just sort of like getting people to want to live there, pack up and go there. Like, like, there's an opportunity. It's the new wild, wild west. You know, it's just kind of like 
Is it going to be a campaign to get people to want to be mm. out there? I, basement. I would bet you at some point, if, if we get to the point where we can send whole shits of people out there, mm -hmm. I bet at some point some country would send their undesirables to Mars. Yeah. They're like, we don't want these people anymore. Mm. They're all criminals or they're all this or that and they're going to send them against their will to Mars. Can you imagine that? Like a Mars prison? Yeah. That would be pretty heavy. Or something like... I bet people will do that. Or or the moon. What I'll, what, all right, I'll, I'll put this... I'll put this up. I'm really worried... Whoa! I'm really worried about the moon. Like, like if you ever follow the studies of like how perfect we got it because of the moon and our distance from the sun, um, they're they're talking about going and drilling on the moon and like mining and setting up mm. camp, you know, station. Yeah. So that we can build on, you know, in space versus here on Earth. Yeah. And maybe even collect from, like, asteroids and all that, meteorites. And, um, what if they fuck up the moon and, like, all this precious life and day cycles, you know, like the rise and flow of the tides? Like, what uh, if that, what if that got say, fucked up? What if they're already doing it? I think they are. Well, well, I think there's other factors going on. Mm -hmm. I was I was watching a National Geographic the other day about the amount of cement that China's China's laying down, and like we got we got all like they said something like they built the amount of concrete we have in one year on the the entire United States concrete of all these cities and shit they built they added that much in a year or something like that it was crazy it was wow. like yeah. shit ton of cement it has all this weight and now that they've built they're saying that it's changing the axis of the earth by mm -hmm. the weight the weight of how much they're adding to it so like all our cycles and like global warming yeah yeah like yeah it's all related to our our perfect little alignment yeah. with the moon and with the sun what if we fuck it up like what what if what if the end of the world is way off somewhere in the distant future but then we fuck it up and boom suddenly you know we're we're dried up like you know the center of Africa like the Sahara like we're suddenly we're w the equator is right on top of us you know like the equator will move and the the days will change like the oceans would rise and fall yeah <laughs> more uh, I mean I've been I think that was another thing too with the water mm -hmm. like the water gets more out of control mm -hmm. it's already out of control so just kind of just amp it up some more with our shenanigans you know uh, it's kind of I guess that with our time are we doing more damage or I guess in your time living did you hurt the earth <laughs> the, oh yeah uh, I, I don't know I don't know I mean cause like in one sense you could say oh they're they're building infrastructure they're creating community they're mm. they're building their civilization the, and good for them right like yeah, yeah 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 but then the resources they use from the planet um how that infrastructure is going to be run yeah I mean I guess why are we so obsessed with space? Uh, I've had that question asked in a 
never really took it as a serious question. Well, I mean, what are you looking I, for? What are we looking for? So, we're going to have to do whole episodes on this shit, but, uh, every time I've done some, like, psychedelic, it was to, I came to the conclusion that people are, people are where, where it's at. Mm. That whenever we feel sad or lonely or whatever, it's because we're, we're alone. We've been left alone. Mm. Even if you're just in a room by yourself, like right now, I feel better because I got we're talking to each other, so I can see you. You're here, like we're around each other. But like when you go and people leave and you're all alone, it, it kind of affects you. Mm -hmm. You know, like it. There's this need, this want to not be alone, and sometimes. I think we look up at space and go like, are, are we alone? We're in this giant mm. open chasm of space, and we're the only. Are we the only ones? Like we're alone. So there's this giant cosmic human suffering slash need for companionship and to be around each other. Mm -hmm. And I think some people, and I'm not. I'm not even saying people who are interested in space don't like people but I'm saying like they I think when we're looking out there we're really looking for company mm -hmm. we want to be around people company or companionship companionship well well it's one and the same I, I think mm -hmm. it's not all sexual it's <laughs> it's uh yeah you yeah. know hanging out like being around each other feeding off of each other's mm -hmm. energies and like there's a lot more energy when you get a shit ton of people together. There's this heat. There's this, like, yeah. power. Huh. Like, I, I really think there's more t to the world and b energies between us as people that's, that you can't see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can't smell it. You can't taste it. But it's there. And I think when we're looking up to space or, you know, just looking out the window we're seeking that energy that we need yeah and sometimes you know you can focus on Mars and get excited about that you know oh mm. the stars it's interesting and exciting and it's unknown yeah but like I think it all boils down to wanting each other it's like wanting companionship wanting mm. to not feel alone and I think when people look towards space, it's like we're more together as a people. Like we're all here together on Earth, and when we look up above and beyond, it's like we're thinking bigger than ourselves. Like mm -hmm. we're, mm -hmm. it's a global thing. We're not just oh, we're black and brown and white. We're people on Earth. We're Earth. We're humans. Yeah. Looking up at space, going, who else? Who the hell, who else is out there? Because we're alone. Mm. Are we alone? I saw it the other day. I think, I think we are alone. I mean, really? What happened? Tell I us mean, about it. I think it's more. You know, when we're born, we're alone, and mm. even if you're a twin, you might have that. I think twins have that special connection, but mm -hmm. you know, most likely everyone's kind of alone in that. Mm -hmm. setting yeah and then it comes to the end where you die alone you're by yourself so you're kind of symbolically always going to be by yourself mm -hmm. but having this factor of an unknown place or an unknown space space you know it can kind of be anything mm -hmm. so it's like the imagination, the wonder, you know, it's sort of just all lit up. So, I mean, you're talking about companionship, but I'm like, it would be pretty cool to go to a, a Mars and meet some sexy aliens, but I doubt that will happen. <laughs> you, <laughs> your angle is sexy. Mar Martians, aliens. Yeah, well, I, I, that's what I 
Oh, that's what I... So you that, that's the thought that went into my head when you're saying, like, so seeking other... Okay, companionship. Other okay. things, and just sort of like, oh, man, <laughs> I'm fine being... Uh, but I, I, but I, I think, like, too, like... So you look... Uh, okay, go ahead. Go ahead. I mean, I, I don't know why I think it... Romanticizing this perfect somebody or this mm. odd person that you mean the one that you no 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 not the one the the opposite the not from here the foreign where mm. it's uh mm, I guess that's the exoticness is to go from something overseas is exotic versus now we're talking about space is like exotic times yeah. a million so yeah. why not why not but I never thought of that until you kind of pointed that out so now when I think of space travel I'm going to think of well, hopefully there's some sexy alien <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I think I'm just uh, pushing so, so that's your your space in in game. That's how we uh, that's how we're gonna get you. I'm mean, going I'm so right off of your logic. Uh, so with space the companionship. Because I, I I thought it was more like, well, I always thought of it to where we want to take your resources from this planet. We want to mm. we want the resources. We're we're looking for the gold. We're looking for the rubies. We're mm. looking for the the gold. Yeah, we're looking for the resources. Yeah, but I never, I didn't really think of the the actual individual or the group of people, or we call them aliens, but I don't. Mm. I uh, I started hearing talk about uh, asteroid mining, how they're usually made of metal, and people have talked about finding an asteroid going and orbiting it landing on it mining it maybe even trying to drag it uh -huh. and then selling it to the highest bidder yeah these precious metals that you know sometimes here on earth there's very little of this metal and it's because it comes from asteroids or uh -huh. you know whatever or meteorites and they're that's the only metal on earth that yeah, you know, it yeah. comes from so they're talking about hey well what if we went and snagged us an asteroid and went and sold that fucker like mm. make some money make some cash all that so I don't know what the <laughs> 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 that was but I'm saying like uh, this harvesting and terraforming is kind of where I see money going uh -huh. like if, if they want to make going to Mars a real thing it's got to make profit somehow mm. that's kind of that's 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 what kind of excites me and disappoints me at the same time about our current society here mm -hmm. is money drives everything yeah we do it for money more than we do it for our own health mm -hmm. so a lot of research that's out there is to to sell us pills. Mm, yeah, yeah. It's not to cure us of our ailments, which you know would be the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. It's to figure out a way to profit off of our continued keep that uh, keep uh, us uh, alive, prolong prolong our our disease, illness, yeah, whatever. To sell us pills and make money, mm -hmm. and the price of pills are going up and up and up. So what I'm saying is that's a perfect example of capitalism hurting us mm -hmm. in the long run yeah so what I'm saying is if we were to try to go to space where would the money go and you said a quarter of a million to go to space yeah how much would you pay to go to Mars I, I, I think the first people that get there are gonna fucking die it's gonna happen like mm. And then we're going to send more, try to figure out what happened. Hopefully they don't die. Yeah. And then we'll send more. Like, we're, we're going to Mars. It's going to happen. Wow. Probably in our time. Like, space SpaceX is on it. 
I wonder if it's going to be like a like will it become like our entertainment where I mean it kind of is right now uh-huh. I mean it's it's science based but like we're kind of we're we're in between those space travel I mean even though it's it's real it's also sort of just we also grew up in a time where it was romanticized and you know like Star Wars Star Trek where you know there's villains and mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so it almost reminds me of the, like, the, the Wild Wild West like mm-hmm. how the space astronauts the new cowboys you know like mm-hmm. you want, the, want new, to the new front the last frontier uh, like people want to be cowboys and move out west and look for gold and mm-hmm. Now is we want to go to Mars Mars and find the meaning of life or something. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I guess what is the intentions of someone that does spend that much money to go? Like, what are they expecting to get out of it, or is it is it that because I'm privileged and have that money, I can blow it and say, hey, I was in space for for a short amount of time, and, and none of us will ever know because. I mean, if you had the money to blow, would you <laughs> go to Mars? <laughs> would you do that? Go to space? Uh, I think I would like to try the whole thing where they do the diving with the big plane and you get weightless, like gra- zero gravity. Uh-huh. I think I'd like to try that. I don't think I want to strap to a rocket until, you know, rocket number two million. Rocket man? Yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I want it to be tested. I want it to be done, tried and true, and then I'll go. You don't want to be the guinea pig? Yeah, I, I don't want to be the guy that fucking suffocates on Mars day one. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. didn't know the wind was going to blow that hard, and suddenly you got the cracked glass and uh, sucking the wind, and you're running to change your pack, but you got to disinfect, and the whole time you're like, oh, my... my Sue's beeping, you know, like, oh, this shit's it's happening. Yeah. This is it. This is how it ends. I just got here. I'm the guy. I'll be the guy, the nameless guy. Nobody will know my name. I'll be the first one to die. Man. Yeah. Probably those chiefs in space, too. They're going to go down, man. <laughs> They're going to die for something. Oh, man. So, so I don't know. Like, uh, I'm saying once they got the dome and they got the dome figured out once they got it all figured out I'll, I'll do it uh-huh. once they got AC running yeah, yeah, yeah. when yeah. it's cool and, and ventilated <laughs> you stop getting cancer from the fucking the sun rays and all that shit <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that, that's another thing about Mars like we have these moving pieces of metal over each other and it creates a gravitational field and that protects us from the sun's rays uh-huh. we're in this perfect environment we want to leave it like M- Mars is a huge gamble yeah but people want to do it to say they can like e- Elon Musk is on his way and I think he'll be one of the people that does it that profits from it and that you know paves the way yeah his goes down in history is yeah and yeah. then yeah and then anybody else in the world is going to want to compete with that. Mm-hmm. So they're going to go. Yeah. I, I'm pretty sure China has landed probes on Mars now. Like, dude. Which I'm like, oh, shit, Star Wars, it begins. Like, there's Chinese drones on Mars up there with the American mm-hmm. or the international, the whatever. Yeah. Private. They're, they're there. Like, all these coalitions with NASA and the U of A and all that like all these universities they're they're all sending these probes so China's up there too now yeah. I mean they're scientists they're they're there for that yeah but it's like now there's a, ra- a space a new space race and it's exciting but like I said now there's a space race to see who can sell the cheapest ticket or I don't know what is the race I think right now the race is proof 
Uh-huh. Is it viable? Can we do it? Yeah. A lot of people were talking about leaving Earth just fucked up. Like, oh, we ruined it. Let's go. And starting over. Let's start, oh, we're going to start fresh on Mars. We're going we're gonna to ruin this perfect place and then we're just going to go and shit up another place, you know, and then we're going to keep exploring yeah. the whole time while we shit on another planet. Like, uh, at some point, if there are aliens, they're going to fuck us up for fucking shit up. Fucking Earth up, whatever. Think so? I don't know, I don't know, man. I, I don't know, like, I, I feel like, I feel like there's a whole other level to humanity or being human like energy wise th- I think there's a whole plane uh-huh. or place or energy level that we have to achieve mm-hmm. or may never achieve because we're completely unaware of it but I'm, I think there's a whole other level of energy that we're connected to mm-hmm. and I think from time to time people find it and go when they die, they go. They mm. change their next level. Yeah. And I'm, I'm just basing this on some weird experiences I've had. And mm. it's like... I don't know where I'm going with all this. Yeah, yeah. Now yeah, no, I hear... It's about space travel. Now it's metaphysical. I don't know. Well, I, I think it, it, it all goes back to that validation of existence. You know, actually coming coming across another. Well, we say aliens, but who's to say they're not just people like us? Yeah, that would be a fucking trip. Hey, hey. <laughs> 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 look at my toes, look I at mean, my hands. I think it's a. Uh, I think that might kill some of the buzz. You know, <laughs> the, um, yeah, I mean, I I mean everything going on has question. Like I think Juan said it, that our our, our mortality, you know, like our time, yeah. and to even have that under your belt to where oh he was in space, mm. but um, to even just be like. I had to go to space to to see if there was something else out there, or I needed mm. to yeah okay to experience that the validation that validation of, yeah. of who I am because what if it is still alone on what if it is still aloneness even to a deeper degree mm. you know so I think it, the 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 space travel is figuring that out yeah well I, I think I think that's what I was trying to get at like we're looking up but we should be looking here like oh, oh. the ones that are seeking that the ones that are going to go I mean yes they'll be like oh, I'm, I'm a I'm a lead scientist I'm going to pave the way there's a huge honor I'm going to represent I'm going to go mm-hmm. And if and if need be, give my life in the pursuit of furthering mankind's knowledge, right? Mm, yeah. What are we, what are we saying? And then some of them will be some rich guy just going, ah, I fucking did it. What do you? What is it? What have you done lately? I've been to space. Suck it, you know. Yeah, but um, I think that's integrity. Yeah. Well, well, I guess what I'm getting at is like. They're, they're seeking that validation that next level for them and I'm thinking we could all be satisfied by this energy that I was talking about which comes from each other's mm-hmm. and I think the highest level that I've ever reached was was letting go of the bullshit like and the only way I could describe it is I stopped caring about all the stuff that I worry about uh on a daily basis a second to second thing these things that are in the back of my mind like stuff I worry about yeah and think about and focus on when I truly gave them up I felt like there was a tug 
tugging, tugging me upward. And if I could just let it go, like the second I, I cleared my head and stopped worrying, mm -hmm. there was this like pooling feeling of going up. Mm -hmm. And one of the first times I ever experienced the what I, what I can only call plugging in where I plugged into the, the energy that I'm talking about that is created by us mm -hmm. here on Earth, by humans. Um, it was up. It was up above me. I had to go up to, to plug in. Yeah. And it was the greatest feeling I had ever felt like. My eyes just started pouring tears. I felt so good. This energy. So what I'm saying is we I relate that to people mm. that energy and when we stop worrying about our colors and our taxes and our you know our homes and our mm. our kids and our education and our money yeah how yeah. much we saved how much we spend our fat on our body like when we truly let that go is and we start seeking each other's out and connecting not just here in America or on the res but with everybody Mexico you know maybe we stop calling each other's all these different things and come together and then I think we would find that satisfaction that we all seek mm. and we're and I think like when we're feeling alone and we're seeking the stars or looking outward hoping for something like I'm sure people go oh I, I prefer to be alone mm -hmm. even then when you're alone you feel alone there's this missing piece yeah and it's people like so I think the satisfaction we seek will be found in ourselves mm. and maybe time travel is within us maybe this space is within us and we're already connected to it and we just let it go yeah let go and figure it out and join each other's mm. I don't know how maybe I'm getting too philosophical here. No, yeah, I think I think maybe in our I think you know, being from, from where we're from there's a lot of messages in our songs and then even dancing like mm -hmm. I think when people are connected it's usually to music mm -hmm. dancing mm -hmm. singing mm -hmm. energy yeah all, the, that, all those produce a signal and I think that's kind of the similar energy you're talking about tapping into where where it's like a It's a collaborative effort. It's not just uh, mm -hmm. all one person, or there's no one person has more say over the next. It's just sort of I, I don't want to say equal, but I, I think yeah. it's just sort of um, the energy is one. And it's not no one over whose house is so I think by when you're talking about letting go of all the things that worry it, it's all these categories and it's all these um placements and you know even talking about school and just standards and where you're at and what grade did you get you know we're we're constantly having to think about these things and to mm -hmm. be able to I put value in it. Yeah, to be relieved of those, of those constructions or yeah. contraptions, whatever you want to call it, just to be free or one or I don't know the word, but I think it's it's definitely something. Just I mean, I, even trying to describe it, I'm like. It's it's not something you 
can just force, but it takes the force of everybody in it. Or I don't know. I just I just remember um somebody telling talking about like a a run, and after the run, it was like a big like a big dance. I don't think it was like wider. I think it was like traditional singers and they're doing the mm-hmm. round dance. Mm-hmm. And he was talking about that there were so many people dancing that he couldn't see where it was the beginning and the mm-hmm. ending. It was just this great feeling of everybody just sort of all being on the same wavelength mm-hmm. I don't know if that's the word or if that's mm-hmm. what yeah. that's what we're talking about that's, but that's what I'm talking about um, there was an energy that they were creating yeah and it was all circled around their music and the the dance mm-hmm. the beat the rhythm and when they all got on the same rhythm boom magic and power and this like connection yeah and satisfaction Mm. I bet you saw smiles there. Mm-hmm. People were being satisfied by this energy. Yeah. Like, like it's kind of like that when you do a good, good deed for somebody and you feel mm-hmm. good. It, it, it feels good, but it doesn't last long. So what I'm saying is, like, if we did more and more and more and connected together mm-hmm. for each other's selflessly, the better you'll feel. Mm-hmm. In general, and I think I th- and I think the feeling good leads to longevity. Mm-hmm. Like people who want to live for a long time, that's how you do it. Is this that good feeling? Yeah. yeah. So you got so you got to balance it. Yeah. Because there's bad too. There's a bad feeling. Well, to have a accurate definition of one you gotta know the other mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. balance yeah I mean I think it's it's accepting the shittiness because it kinda um, puts things in perspective when it's good mm-hmm. you know you're able to appreciate it or you're able to see the the other spectrum of it to mm-hmm. where hey this could be a lot worse or, you know yeah. I could be way deeper than what what this is mm-hmm. but again I think it's back to those voices or, the, or those things that we're telling ourselves to mm-hmm. to keep us from having that that type of um, freedom I don't know I don't, I don't know if that's the right word but it's definitely this relief of the matrix, you know, the the mm-hmm. things that I'm a part of, things mm-hmm. that are I'm contributing to, the things that are weighing me down, you mm-hmm. know, it's kind of mm-hmm. all of that. And it, yeah, it all kind of goes into your psyche. Mm-hmm. So to be able to, I don't know, shut it off or filter it out, but to still have. I don't know if it's that connection with who you are or if it's just not having to feel like you're trying to please some mm-hmm. bigger entity mm-hmm. or fit in or yeah or be the guy with the most gold you know I mm-hmm. think I yeah. think that's another thing too is where we want to we want to be holding something and sometimes it ain't shit, you know, in the bigger picture. Mm. Yeah. So I guess what what is the valuable thing you're holding? Mm. And is it valuable enough in the in the long run to to still be holding it? So. I keep thinking about 
my last my last shroom tr shroom trip, and I was doing it. I was doing it with one of my cousins, and he had never done it before. And I kind of like just left him to his own devices, and let him do his do his thing. I did mine, and um, it felt like he he was kind of comparing us, or we we always kind of do that, and. Uh, He'd make me think about myself in negative ways and like, or like have to examine myself and like validate myself. Mm. And it was like a, an anchor that kept me here. Yeah. And when I was talking about that, that pulling upward feeling, it was like I was transcending. And I was like, if I could just let go of my earthly possessions. I don't even just mean possessions. I meant like everything that I put value on. Yeah. And when I would let it go, I would start pulling up. And I, it was almost like I would leave my body and my energy would go up and I'd go up with it, my consciousness. Mm. And then he'd start saying something to me, speaking to me or talking shit and I would like come back down. And it would like, it would be like I fall back down fast hit my body and then I sit up like what what like wait what and, and I'd be back there with my problems in my dirty house and like it's like looking at him like you know thinking about myself like in a negative way like thinking about the time when do I gotta go to work uh, you know when when does work start again yes yeah. um, all my stressors like it was all in that room Damn. And if I could just let go, let stop letting them hold me, detach. I, yeah, I would just. It was like just cutting the thread, and it was like I was attached to a giant helium balloon, and it was like pulling me, like mm -hmm. lifting me up, this my inside, my consciousness up. And it felt like if I could just completely let go then I'd be on the next level mm. where in my mind maybe the that's the aliens maybe they're here right in front of us in this room but mm. we're not aware of them like it's like until you transcend you're not aware of anything else yeah suddenly time travel is possible suddenly wormholes exist suddenly you have access to this whole outer world mm. and it's not so big but you have to transcend first yeah like I always think about the Bibles and like all the you know all, all the writings all the religious writings are about living a, a, a well life yeah but we don't all hold to it sometimes we even take the writings and use it to hurt other people yeah so like we're we're fucking up the message it's yeah. like playing the telephone oh, yeah. at the end it means nothing yeah, like yeah. what the first person said they they say it and then people tell it to more people and then at the end of the line they, they don't they have no clue what you just said <laughs> yeah. even, even a simple sentence yeah so, yeah no that's so like I think these like I'm really really leaning towards all these angels and demons and gods existed yeah I have true people and the stories have been passed down so long that now they're legend and myth and mm. mythological they're they're not real it's fiction yeah you know or or it's ancient religion it's beliefs what do you believe in but I think they were real at some point oh yeah actual flying beings and instead of clouds maybe rockets maybe spaceships and they brought these rules for us to live by in order to join the bigger team mm. the, w the, l the higher level in order to transcend so when they're talking about heaven maybe we're joining the alien network like the uplifted the advanced the yeah the all knowing <coughs> collective mm. you know what I'm saying like the yeah, but, no. but we're fucking it up, you know. Yeah, we're capitalists. We're Democrats and Republicans. Well, and we're we're natives and non-natives. We're, we're addicted to holding value. Mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. to a and projecting value. Yeah, towards each other's. Yeah, competing against yeah. each other's. Well, in I guess in reality we're we're in, we don't need the value as much, or or we just need to redirect it. Redirect our value to our kids and our family and people, other people. Yeah, I I, th- I, th- I really do think somewhere I haven't figured it out. I don't I don't think I ever will. But at some point, <laughs> if we figure it out and start valuing each other's, there'd be a, some huge release or positive energy. That we'd have together, yeah. Versus, you know, being different. Hmm. I think so. Yeah. Maybe we need to organize a big hmm. something, big ass orgy. <laughs> 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 I don't know about that. But Pure ecstasy. Yeah, we're yeah. seeking out that. No, that well. Just energy, like a wing stop, like the dance. There is energy there. Yeah, positive energy. Yeah. So I don't know. People do rituals, and you know, there's magic in that. There's energy that these people produce together, and when they practice it, there it is. Like if they truly believe, truly feel it. Yeah. Hmm. I think there's more to the world than we see, than our, than uh, you know, our senses. Yeah, no, I, I believe that, like the spiritual world and mm-hmm. sort of not ghosts, but just our relatives, ancestors. I mean, I think, I think we're still here. Mm. Yeah, the spirit here. We're on a different plane. The energy is still here. Mm-hmm. <coughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm and when you like remember and feel good, it's their energy. Yeah, or the energy they shared with you. You're accessing it again. Yeah. 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 No. It's pretty, pretty heavy, but pretty powerful. You know. And then again, it goes back to the aloneness. Mm-hmm. You're you're alone, but you're not always by yourself. Mm-hmm. So I don't know where I'm going with that, but yeah, I I don't know where we went with this whole thing. Yeah, I mean, we talked about a lot of. Going to the Mars. I think we've talked about going to Mars a few times. Mm-hmm. I mentioned mm-hmm. it, but yeah, we, um, uh, we we rehash it all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure I've said stuff all the time, again and again. Oh, well, I I think you would go to Mars before I went to Mars. I think so. I think you're right. Yeah, but uh, if there's a reason for me to go. Then I I might be there. Well, apparently, if they got some space titties, yeah, you're, you're, yeah, like, yeah. You're, you're like, oh, on the board, let's go. What is that? Total oh, Recall. Uh, yeah, there three, you go. Three tents. So film also yeah. hypes it up, mm-hmm. the, the space expedition. Yeah. I I wanted to bring up the the end of it, where they burn the ice. uh uh-huh. Or they combust it and it turns into oxygen and they have their air finally. On um, Total Recall? Mm-hmm. I don't, yeah, see, I don't remember. I well, it's <laughs> an at- like, that's what we need is an atmosphere. Uh-huh. And maybe there was one on Mars at some point, but um, not anymore. Yeah. Or it's barely there. Yeah. So, huh. whoever, whoever goes, they got their fucking work cut out for them. Oh, yeah. And I don't think private privateers can do it alone. Yeah, oh, nah, I remember. Yeah, I remember this. <laughs> that uh, conversation. This, we've had this conversation. Yeah, where? Okay. 
Oh well, uh, well, I think I think that's a sign for us to call it. <laughs> <laughs> Until next time. Everybody. All right. Well, what are we calling this episode? I uh, I want to say it's it's either randomness or philosophy. Oh yeah. Ra- random philosophy. Uh, I wanted to call it just kicking back, but I think we've gotten pretty heavy. So yeah, philosophy, legacy, ge- generalizations of the the scattered mind, what's the motion? Yeah, wh- whatever we're doing here, we've definitely gone on a journey that there may be no coming back from. Yeah, ain't, ain't getting that back. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, getting that that hour and forty five minutes back. Yeah. Sorry, everybody. <laughs> Just that hour, you will yeah. yeah. Sorry, guys. That's uh, uh, next time. Next time. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get them on the next one. They can't. Hey, they can't all be. They can't all be winners. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but um, any last words? I guess it's. Because we talk about this, we we use the word, I mean, the the word woke to <laughs> where you're like you're exposed to all this history and now you know more. But mm. I don't know. Sometimes it seems like you know all this history, but are you doing anything to change it mm. or impact it or what are you? How are you going to be? Um, leaving the planet you know you got some adventures under your belt or, you know do you do you find any gold mining you know that's, I think it's oh, like, what are you actually doing with your time on earth and is it too much time to where now we, we need to go out of space to to waste it too <laughs> mm. um, but um, for whatever amount of time you're given uh, I think it's knowing that when it's gone it's gone mm. so use it wisely but also freely mm. because I think that's another part of it too to where at some point you're not going to be here mm-hmm. and what everything you thought was valuable is maybe loses its value too because you're not there to hold it mm-hmm. I think that kind of goes back to legacy and passing on your your riches to your your youngins or the next in line mm-hmm. so do you want a legacy or is it just doing fun stuff with with your time? Me? No, I, I think that's my final word. Listeners. Nice. Mm. Well, yeah. Um I'll just close with saying keep questioning. Your ignorance isn't a negative. Being aware of what you're ignorant of and maybe doing something about it, mm. seeking out something, anything. It's a little one up. Add, adds value to life. Yeah. And, um,. Uh, As long as as long as I'm working on my questions and getting to give you my ideas and you give me feedback, and as long as our listeners are thinking, using their brains and listening and thinking about their own lives and about the world around them, yeah, I think uh, we we've succeeded. Mm that for now and in, in this moment that's my purpose is to 
philosophize and to just get get our our thought, get our minds going. Yeah, and to provoke a question. Mm-hmm. And if anybody out there is listening, and I've caused you to have questions, success. Then that yeah, that's a success, and I've done my job for the day. Mm. Okay. Yeah. So I'm gonna. Goodbye, everybody. Thanks for listening. Yeah. <laughs> Sticking with us. If you made it towards the end, yeah, you get the price. Yeah. Okay. So I'm, I'm gonna hit the big red button. Peace yeah. out, everybody. Peace.